Hi, I'm Jeff Hirsch, and in today's video, I want to show you some of the cool new features Adobe has added to Lightroom Classic with the release of version 11.4 in June of 2022. Let's jump right in and take a look at the two biggest improvements, which have to do with the great new masking features that Adobe added to Lightroom Classic last fall when version 11 was first released. If you aren't already familiar with the new masking system in Lightroom, it's an absolute game changer for photo editing. If you need a tutorial on the new masking tools, I've got a two hour deep dive workshop video available on my website. I'll include a link in the notes below the video. You will need Lightroom Classic version 11 or higher to have access to this feature. Along with the existing linear gradient, radial gradient, and adjustment brush that we've had for many years now, the program now offers you the ability to create new mask types based on the color, brightness, or depth values present in the image. Even more incredible is Lightroom's ability to create automatically generated masks for subjects and skies in your photos using artificial intelligence. It works very well in most cases. Using AI subject selection and or AI sky selection makes easy work of creating masks for both your subject and background so that your subject can quickly and easily be adjusted separately from the background on which it sits. The new masking system was a huge leap forward, but it did have a couple of minor irritations. Luckily for all of us, both of those issues have now been addressed with the very latest 11.4 update to Lightroom Classic. The first one has to do with the ability to invert a mask. Since the introduction of the new masking system, we've had the option to invert any of the individual masking elements we've created so that the adjustment can be applied to the inverse or opposite of what had been initially masked. This worked great for simple masks that were made up of a single element, but was much trickier to accomplish if the mask was made up of multiple elements, as is sometimes necessary. In most cases, if I make an AI-generated select subject mask, Lightroom does a fantastic job of isolating my subject and masking it off as a separate area that I could adjust without affecting any of the other parts of my photo. But in some cases, that initial mask is imperfect, and I have to add to it, subtract from it, or even intersect it with additional masks in order to get exactly the area that I want to adjust. The result is a compound mask or mask group that is made up of several masking elements. With earlier versions of Lightroom 11, we had no ability to invert the entire mask group and instead had to rely on all sorts of awkward workarounds to duplicate the individual mask elements and then invert them. It was confusing to execute and not always successful. Fortunately, with the release of Lightroom Classic version 11.4, we now have the ability to invert an entire mask group and not just an individual element. Let me show you a couple of examples of how helpful this can be. In this first example, Lightroom is able to generate a perfect AI-based mask of my subject. I can adjust the subject, or I can invert the mask and adjust everything except the subject. But in this next example, you can see that the AI select subject mask is imperfect. It's missed part of the oar and part of the gondola, so I'll need to add those back in to create a mask group that covers the entire subject. First, I'll use a brush with the auto mask option enabled to paint back in the missing oar. Auto mask helps me from coloring outside the lines. As long as I keep the crosshairs inside the area I'm painting, it shouldn't leak out into the surrounding areas. Then, I'll use a regular brush without auto mask enabled to paint in a mask that covers the rest of the boat. Now I've got a good mask for the entire subject, and I can use it to make an inverted mask that can then be used to adjust the background independently. Prior to Lightroom Classic version 11.4, inverting this compound mask would have been difficult task. 
but now all you have to do is select the entire mask group in the masking panel, not one of the individual elements, and then choose Invert Mask from the palette menu. You can also accomplish this by right-clicking on the mask and choosing Invert from the pop-up. Not only has Adobe added a convenient Invert Mask option to the masking panel, they've also given us an option to simultaneously duplicate and invert a mask, something I find myself doing often when trying to adjust my subject and my background separately. Previously, I would have to make an initial mask for my subject, then I would duplicate it, and finally I would invert the duplicated copy to make a second mask that targets my background. This can now be accomplished with a single menu item, Duplicate and Invert. Here's another example. I'd like to isolate this woman and her broom from the rest of the image so I can darken down everything else and put some focus on her as the main part of my story. The initial Select Subject Mask has some problems, though. It has included a figure on the left that I don't want at all, and it has left out parts of the woman's broom, which I very much want to be part of the mask. I'll use the Linear Gradient or Brush tool to make a mask element that subtracts the figure on the left that I don't want. And I'll use the Brush tool to create a mask element that adds back in the parts of the broom that are missing, I might even get in there with one more brush adjustment and remove some of the unwanted areas between her knees and around her head. Once I've got my subject masked off properly, I'm ready to invert the entire mask group to create a mask that will be limited to the background. In this case, I'm going to duplicate and invert the mask at the same time so I can have one mask for the subject and a separate one for the background. This was my number one complaint about the new masking system, and I am delighted that Adobe has addressed it so quickly and didn't make us wait until Lightroom 12 comes out to include it as a feature. So that's the first big improvement to the masking system, but there's one more upgrade I want to tell you about as well. The other problem I had with the new masking system is that if you create AI-based masks for a photo, and then you want to copy and paste those adjustments onto another photo or use them in a developed preset, you had to manually force Lightroom to update the AI-based masks for any new image that you were syncing to the original one. It has to figure out where the sky or where the subject is on the new photo. Well, with the release of Lightroom Classic version 11.4, those AI masks are recomputed automatically for you in almost all cases. So if you're applying a preset or copying and pasting settings between images, you no longer have to manually update the masks. Lightroom will do it for you. This also means that you can now create and apply adaptive develop presets that include AI-based masks for both subject and sky. When you hover over them or click on them to apply them to an image, any masks will be recalculated for that particular image. In fact, Adobe is now including some adaptive develop presets with Lightroom that are designed to work with AI subject selections and AI sky selections. One of the bonus items that you get with my Lightroom 11 masking video training package is a develop preset that automatically selects and masks off both the subject and the background, allowing you to quickly edit both independently. Prior to version 11.4, you'd have to go in and manually update the AI masks for any image that you applied the preset to. Now you can just click on it and the masks will automatically get updated. There are some rare cases where Lightroom does not automatically update the masks, and in that situation there is still an option to manually ask the program to update the AI settings for you. 
This can be done on single or multiple images by going to the photo menu and choosing develop settings, update AI settings from the sub menu. Those are the two major improvements, but there are also several minor ones I'd like to mention. Adobe has made the amount slider for masking adjustments a little more obvious and easier to find. Previously, we had the ability to alter the intensity of the adjustment that was being applied by using the effect amount slider. This has been renamed to amount and moved up to the top of the adjustment pane. When you move the amount slider, any of the adjustments you've dialed in will be scaled up or down in proportion to the others. It's sort of a volume knob for the entire masking adjustment. Likewise, Adobe has also added an amount slider to the develop presets pane, allowing you to dial up or down the intensity of any develop presets you apply. All scalable adjustments in that preset will be adjusted up or down proportionally with the others. Most, but not all, develop parameters can be scaled. Things like the camera profile and whether it's been converted to black and white or not, those can't be scaled, but most other parameters with a slider or a knob on them can be turned up or down. Finally, they've added one more crop overlay to this, the existing set of options. You can now have a fifths overlay that will divide your image into fifths instead of thirds. I'm not sure who or what they intend this for, but I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention it in passing. So those are the latest and greatest features in Lightroom Classic version 11.4. Please feel free to leave a comment below and let me know how you're using the new tools. For more Lightroom and Photoshop videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and go ahead and click the bell icon to get notified anytime I post a new video. And if you aren't already on my mailing list, head over to jeffhirsch.com and sign up for the mailing list and you'll get updates on my classes and workshops and trips, along with bonus tutorial videos and articles for Photoshop and Lightroom. I promise not to spam your inbox and I will never ever sell your address to a third party. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.